This video is brought to you by NordVPN. I use it to protect myself on the web, and you can too, by using this special offer. 75% off a three-year plan, plus one additional month for free. To get it, just go to nordvpn.com slash companyman and use the code companyman. It's in the description. Welcome to episode 9 of Bigger Than You Know, the series where in each episode I feature a company that's much bigger than most people realize. Today's episode is a good one, it's about 3M. I've had so many people requesting that I talk about 3M, with a lot of them specifically requesting that I make it part of this series. Which is a perfect idea, because 3M is huge. On the Fortune 500 list, they're number 97, which means 3M is one of the top 100 companies in the United States. They have sales over $31 billion in 2017. Here's a few other figures from their 2017 annual report that help express their size. Income of nearly $5 billion, total assets approaching $40 billion, and they have over 90,000 employees. I don't know, these numbers are generally consistent from year to year, and it all suggests a very large company. On the stock market, Market, they're one of the staples. They're one of the 30 companies that make up the Dow. It's an industrial average that indicates how the market is doing. I talk more about that in my video about GE, but just realize it's a big deal to be part of it. They're even listed first on it most of the time. It's, well, it's because they're alphabetically first. None of the other 30 start with a number, but still, it's the first one people see. Also worth mentioning, they've been giving dividends for 100 years straight, which investors like. Today, three M is undeniably one of the largest companies in existence, which is extra impressive considering they had probably the shakiest beginning I've ever covered on this channel. It started as the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, which is far too long, so naturally people started calling it 3M. It began in 1902 by a bit of a motley crew. It was five people coming together from different backgrounds. It was a lawyer, a doctor, a butcher, and two railroad executives. The focus of their new business was to mine corundum. Now, of course, we're all very familiar with corundum. Is that how you say it? Corundum? But for the select few that aren't familiar, let's consult minerals.net, the complete information guide to rocks, minerals, and gemstones. Corundum is a very hard, tough, and stable mineral. For all practical purposes, it's the hardest mineral after diamond. For these reasons, it works very well as an abrasive, meaning it's a perfect material to make things like sandpaper. And that was their plan. From the beginning, mine a bunch of this corundum, use it to make sandpaper, grinding wheels, and whatever else, sell those to the public, and there's your business. Just like the name says, do some mining and manufacturing in Minnesota. It sounds like a solid plan, but very early on, they had what I think you would call a major problem. See, they thought they were mining corundum when it was actually anorthite, which of course we're all very familiar with, so I don't have to tell you that it isn't good for making sandpaper, and in fact, isn't really good for anything. I know, this sounds like the punchline to a joke, but this was a very serious issue. They basically wasted all of their time and money obtaining something with almost no value. They centered their business around corundum and just learned that they don't have any. So how do you recover from something like that? Well, they tried making the best of the situation by using the anorthite to make the sandpaper, but no one wanted it. It was a highly competitive market and they were selling an inferior product. It was looking like the end of the company and it sure took a lot to save it. One of the early investors, Edgar Abner, refused to let them fail. He convinced a wealthy friend of his, Lucius Ordway, to get involved as well and together they paid off 13000 dollars of debt and provided 12,000 of capital. It resulted in the two owning 60% of the company. And over the years, Lucius provided an additional $250,000. I imagine it would have been easier in many ways just to start an entirely new business rather than rescue this small struggling business, but I suppose they had their reasons. 3M was able to abandon all that anorthite nonsense and purchase the proper materials. They built a fancy new two-story 
sandpaper manufacturing plant, and at this point, I think you can say they had a solid foundation. Such an odd beginning, but from there, they stopped relying on miracles to grow the business, they did it through their innovations. From very early on, 3M has been known to spend a bunch of money on research and development. In 2017, they spent $1.85 billion on it, which is over 5% of their sales, and as expected, it's similar to previous years. As a result, they've been issued over 100,000 patents, currently about 3,000 new ones every year. They are constantly inventing new things and constantly improving previous inventions. Obviously, there's far too many to talk about each one, so I'll just touch on some of the big ones that helped establish the company and make them into what they are today. For instance, in 1921, they introduced wet or dry sandpaper. It was a landmark product for them. This guy, Francis Oakey, independent from 3M, invented a waterproof sandpaper. 3M learned about it, bought the patent from him, perfected the coating a little bit, and sold it under the name wet or dry sandpaper. They even hired Francis as a full-time researcher. You might be thinking, is it such a big deal to have waterproof sandpaper? Absolutely, mainly in car manufacturing. Allowing the sandpaper to get wet makes it possible to create nicer finishes by reducing friction and creates less dust, which was a big issue for the workers. You don't want all that dust getting in your lungs. And keep in mind how the auto industry was exploding at this time. It was the early 1920s. The assembly line was fairly new. Cars were the next big thing, and for their purposes, waterproof sandpaper was far superior to the conventional kind. Being the only company to supply it was a very good thing for 3M. Another innovation, only four years later, also stemming from necessity in the automotive industry, masking tape. When you paint a car, you need to mask parts of it so parts can remain unpainted and colors won't run together. 3M saw the necessity, created the tape, and of course, it was a big hit. This was the first tape that they offered, and today, they've expanded that offering quite a bit. The brand is now called Scotch. Along these lines, you know the transparent tape that they make? That started in 1930. They came out with the tape and a portable dispenser for it, and it was a huge hit. They had been doing well, supplying the auto industry and making products for industrial use, but this was their first big success with consumers. And during the Great Depression, of all times, since money was tight, people used it to tape together and repair just about everything. While most other companies were struggling, 3M was growing faster than ever. In the 1940s, they started offering tape for sound recording. You can imagine how that helped the entertainment industry. In the 1950s, they introduced a bunch of new products, such as Scotchgard, you use that to put over the furniture and protect it. Also, Scotch-Bright scouring pads, there's a good chance you bought those before. Here's something impressive. Throughout the 1940s and the 1950s, their sales went up every year. All of this growth and innovation continued through the 1960s and the 70s. From 1963 to 1967, the company doubled in size. The next big innovation worth mentioning is the post-it note in 1980. I don't have much to say about it, but it was a cool product that became popular. In the 1990s, they made floppy disks and more along those lines, but then they spun all of that off into a separate company when they shut down their audio and videotape divisions. There's a lot going on, and 3M is all over the place. So let's Let's skip ahead back to today. As a consumer, they make and likely invented many of the products that you see all the time. The reason you may not realize it is many of them are marketed under separate brands. Go down to the office supply store. Anything you see with the Scotch name on it or Post-it or Command, that's another one, all made by 3M. If you knew about 3M at all before this video, there's a good chance that's how you knew them. That or maybe the sandpaper. And there's a bunch of other products in different industries that you probably don't associate with them. Like I said, in cleaning, there's scotch bright they have multiple brands of bandages even a brand that specializes in air filters and there's a lot more i recommend you keep an eye out for that 3m symbol next time you're at the store and you'll see it on other stuff so as a consumer it's one of those things where you know their products you just didn't realize that they made them but there's a whole nother level to this 3m produces over 50,000 different items they separate their business into five segments industrial
Industrial is 34.5% of their sales. Safety and Graphics is 19.4%. Healthcare is 18.4%. Electronics and Energy is 16.3%. And finally, at the bottom, is Consumer at 14.5%. Almost everything I talked about in this entire video, all the tapes and bandages and everything else, comes together to form their smallest segment. They sold over $30 billion in 2017, and everything I've said is less than 5 billion of it. So what do they make in all these other segments? Oh gosh, that's opening a whole new area. A very large and complex area. It's overwhelming. To learn more about that, I recommend you visit the 3M website and there's this tab that says products for business. Clear out an afternoon and look through that. Like here, let me pick out a few. Under automotive, traffic and vehicle safety, they make that tape that goes on fire trucks to make them all bright and reflective. Under healthcare and dental, they make a lot of the things that you see when you visit the dentist. And then transportation, marine maintenance and repair <laughs> I don't know unless you're in the industry a lot of this stuff is not familiar so 3m is bigger than you know because they brand their products in different ways and more so because over 85% of their sales are from things that the average person would not know about and as if you needed more reasons that they're bigger than you know I also have a third reason they're an international company sure they're Minnesota mining and manufacturing Minnesota being a state in the US but they've expanded today less than 40% of their sales come from the United States. The other 60% are spread out across the rest of the world. No matter where you're from, they sell more in the rest of the world than they do in your country. Let me know in the comments, did you know how big they were? Unless you've actually studied 3M in the past, I can't imagine you thought that they were this big. Here, I take that back. I suppose if you frequently travel around the globe reading packages very closely and also work in multiple industries, yeah, then you would know. Another thing I wanted to point out is 3M is all over the place, way more than most companies out there, which has its drawbacks, but it does make them very diversified, meaning a lot of things have to go wrong for them to fail. Also, I'd like to know, in your profession, do you encounter any 3M products that the general public normally wouldn't? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Now, let me take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, NordVPN, because they provide internet security, but more importantly, they provide peace of mind. That's the part I like best. When you're on the internet, minding your own business, shopping for Christmas gifts, or whatever you do, your information is out there. Your location and your passwords, stuff that you don't want criminals to know. I don't like thinking about that, but at the same time, I can't ignore it. That's where NordVPN comes in. They'll protect you so you don't have to think about it. This is the real deal, military grade encryption on up to 6 connections at the same time, thousands of super fast servers in over 60 countries, no data logging, it's just a great way to protect yourself. And a great time to do it, with this offer for my viewers, 75% off a 3 year plan. That comes to $2.99 a month. Plus, you can use that code COMPANYMAN to get an extra month for free. To get it, go to nordvpn.com slash companyman. The link, as always, is in the description. Thank you for watching.